Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Precious. If you're seeing me for the first time, I'm a practicing Christian. I'm also a mom of four kids. I live in the UK, originally from Nigeria. <laughs> That's my summary, <laughs> brief summary of who I am. So I create content that helps family trying to conceive parenting, relationships, those kind of things. And once in a while, I pray, talk about God, do things as, as a Christian would do, right? But today's video, I want to talk about what it feels like having four kids in 2023 in the UK. Now, by the grace of God, God has blessed I and Derek with four amazing children. We can't change it for anything, but we need to talk about the reality of things, right? I know I've talked about on this channel how we've had to move house, how we've had to buy a bigger car, how everything about the family changed. Now, if you're someone who wants to have four kids, there's a video I made that um, what you need to think about before you have four kids. <laughs> you need to watch that video because that video will open your eyes to a lot of things that people don't tell you. Now, this is 2023. Between the last two years, things have changed, right? Cost, high cost of living. Everything is expensive. Clothing is expensive. Food is expensive. Every single thing is expensive. What have we done? What has changed for us in 2023 with everything being expensive? Everything being expensive. What have we done as a family of um, four? First of all, I've moved jobs. That's the first, the first thing. So I'm back full time. And working Monday to Friday full time, right? But the good thing is that my job is mostly remote, so that's an amazing thing. We're gonna make a video on that special, not now. But what have we done as a family? The first thing we had to do was to reevaluate <laughs> what's going on, what are we doing, what do we have, what do we not have, what are we using that we have, what are we not using that we have, what is important to us as a family, what is not important to us as a family. We had to reevaluate a lot of things. We'll have, for example, we'll have two cars. Do we need two cars? I'm working from home. Derek is working from home. Do we need two cars? The important. Um, do I need to go shopping every week or do I need to go shopping twice a week? Um, do the kids need to do all this so many after school club? You do here, you do here, you do here, you do here. Do we need to do it? Do we need to buy that clothes that we, we just buy and live in the wardrobe? Do we need to go out for every invitation that they invite us or do we need to go out for that meal? A lot of things change. We have to reevaluate most of the things that we do, we, we do as a family. And I think it's actually a blessing in disguise because some things we find ourselves doing, we really don't need to do them, <laughs> basically. Um, but I think circumstances or situations bring us to a point where we need to look at ourselves and start working on ourselves before we even start talking to other people. So reevaluation is one thing we did. Another thing we did as well, we started prioritizing, right? Um, the one of the things that we did, though, our kids, the two older ones, they've been swimming for literally all their life. We start them swimming when they are small and they swim and they swim until they get to stage six. So it got to a point where like, they can swim, they can do all the swimming thing. Why are they still going for swimming? Why are we still, why are we still paying this money? For, for them to be swimming. There's actually no need. So because they know how to swim, they can swim really well. They, they, like they are swimmers, right? There's no point. What we could do is, okay, instead of taking them swimming every Saturday, we can say once a month, we go to a pool, they swim, or go to a water park, they swim, just to keep that skill going. Then the younger ones that actually are learning to swim can continue swimming. So that's a typical example of prioritizing what is important what is important, which it also intertwines with re-evaluation. So a lot of things we have to bring on the table. I and Derek will have to decide what we are doing and what we are not doing. So number two is prioritization. Number three, that we decided to now start doing quality over quantity. Okay. When I mean quality over quantity, now that I'm back full time and Derek obviously is working full time, I may not be able to spend the whole time with the kids. But one thing that I know I do is, number one, I give my kids 100% 100% attention. So if, let's say, I'm, I'm not in a meeting and I can actually pause, they want to speak to me, I stop everything I'm doing, I turn and I speak to them. Um, I finish work, I try to start early so I can finish early. And when I finish, I am done. When I'm done, I am done. I have to concentrate on the kids. So the, the little time I spend with them in the evening, it's so much quality that comes out of it that 
they enjoy and they love um, the whole process. They love the time that I spend with them. And also, I, I think God is helping me to begin to teach them um, independent thinking, right? When I mean independent thinking, I don't mean independent in the sense that they can't do stuff on their own. If you know my kids, <laughs> my kids can even, my kids are running the home basically. Independent thinking, in fact, that they begin to solve problem solving, they begin to think to solve problems by themselves. So when I'm home, they come to ask me questions. I will ask them the same question. So they start coming up with answer. As your mom is not home, what are you going to do about it? So we begin to spend quality time with them. We begin to, so that we'll be able to meet up. Because at this point, with the way things are going, house, mortgage, bills, gas, electricity. If you live in the UK, you understand what I'm saying. Usually, I go to the shop to spend 80, 90 pounds on grocery. Now, the minimum I spend is 120, 130 pounds on grocery. So these are like expenses that are coming. So I had to reevaluate and start doing things that will bring us more money outside every other thing that we do. Another thing we had to do was to stay within our means, right? This one was not um, a big deal for us because I'm a very content person. I'm not competing with anybody. I'm not competing with you. You're not competing with me. I like, and God has, I think God is a natural thing for me. I don't compete with anybody. You're in your lane, I'm on my lane. So we are so content in this family. And and I, I just pray that my kids will pick that up from I and Derek because I and Derek are very content. In fact, most of our friends, most of our people that we roll with, some people, if, if some people roll with this, this group of people, they probably have hypertension. God has blessed us. So we're trying to live or we live within our means. In 2023, if you're someone who is still like, you're just spending anyhow, you're just doing stuff anyhow, you're not planning, you're not, you're going to be in trouble. You have to start, we have to start being, spending within our means, doing things within our means. They invite you for a party and they say you need to wear a showcase, you need to wear as should be and you know that that clothes you don't have the money for it sis stick to what you have and go if they say white dress wear white find a white dress. if you don't have wear whatever you want and go look we have to just know that <laughs> nobody cares <laughs> nobody cares about you if you like go and do we say and cover yourself nobody cares if you like, don't go and do basic. Nobody cares. They will talk either way. So we need to start living within our means. You know that amount of money that you get paid at the end of the month. You don't have any other thing coming. You don't need to kill yourself. You don't need to. You you don't need to go beyond above your means. You don't need to cut your coat beyond your size or above your size in such a way that you live you're in living in Bessie because you're trying to please somebody. So another thing as well that we do or we have done is like I mentioned is that we have to increase our source of income. If you live, if you, if I one of the things I'm going to advise couples or one of the things I'm going to advise you watching me is that. In 2023, you literally need to know how much is coming into your account. You need to know your income, the income of your husband and your income or whoever is watching. Sit down and look at your expenditures, your, 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 your expenses, what comes in and what goes out. If what comes in is equal to what goes out, you need to do something. If what comes in is um, a little bit above what goes out, you need to do something. If what comes in is smaller than what goes out, you need to do something. Now, one of the things that we did when we sat down last year and when we moved into this house, we sat down, looked at our mortgage, looked at our expenses and all of that. We knew that we needed to do something. I immediately started doing upscaling, right? I had to upscale. That helped me to move jobs, right? So um, one of the things that couples can do in 2023 is to do what? Increase the source of income and how can you increase the source of income? Um, don't don't be in a place for too long. That's number one. Number two, look at what's going on in the world. Look at the skills flying about. Are there things that you can do to upskill yourself? Are there things that you can do to increase your source of income? It may not even be jobs. It may be starting a business. It may be doing something small that can just give you a little bit of um, 
uh, money? Are you someone who can teach? You can start teaching. Are you someone who can... There are, there are things that you can do. Pray that God give you wisdom. In 2023 and even beyond this year, things are going to get more difficult. That's the truth. But we are children of God, right? We live in Goshen, right? Children of God that live in Goshen, we don't struggle. The scripture says that he gives us the strength, the power to make wealth. Meaning that there is a kind of power that you need to have that will give you wealth. If you don't have that power, if you don't have that strength, you're not going to have wealth. So my prayer for us today is that in 2023, as everybody is shouting, there is a casting down, we are going to be saying there is a lifting up. These are the things that we are doing in 2023 as a family of six. Do you have any question? Do you have any form of question at all with regards to this video I've made? How are you coping? Please let me know in the comment section. How are you coping in 2023? How are you coping in this year where things are difficult? Everywhere you go to, everything, everywhere on the news, on social media, people are complaining, people are mourning, people are saying things are difficult. How are you coping? Please share on the comment section. You may just be saving a life. You may just be encouraging someone. You may just be that, that's your words or your advice may just be that thing that somebody will read and start doing something. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching me, you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my next video. Bye for now.